Hearts, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl with me, Annalise. Have you ever wondered what the cutest snake in the world is? Well, wonder no more, because today we'll be talking about a snake so cute that even hardcore of videophobes have to admit it's so adorable. Let's meet the hognose snake. There are 14 species of hognose snakes from three different genera. They are a great example of convergent evolution, which is when species that are not related evolve similar attributes. In this case, we have unrelated snake species from North America, South America, and Madagascar that have all evolved the same faces that can be used as shovels and stout bodies that can push through the soil. The hognoses we will be talking about today are from the genus Heterodon specifically Heterodon nasicus, the western hognose snake. The Heterodon genus was classified in 1801 by Pierre-André Latreille. Normally, that's all I'd say about who discovered the genus. I mean, you guys are here to watch me talk about reptiles, not old, dead French dudes. I'm French! Why do you think I have this outrageous accent, you silly king? But Latreille has a really incredible story. He was a French zoologist who was orphaned as a baby and trained as a Roman Catholic priest, who was later imprisoned and sentenced to be executed for not swearing allegiance to the state after the French Revolution. While in prison, again awaiting execution, the prison doctor saw Pierre kneeling on the ground studying what Pierre said was a rare beetle. The doctor was intrigued and sent it to a young local naturalist, Jean-Baptiste Bory de saint vincent who confirmed it was an unknown species. This discovery saved Latreille's life. Within a month, all of Latreille's fellow inmates were dead, but Bory had already arranged to get Latreille out of prison to work with him. Pierre Latreille went on to get degrees in arachnology, entomology, and carcinology. He was so influential in his career that 163 species have been named in his honor and throughout his life, he himself, have named and classified 138 species, mostly bugs and spiders and other invertebrates, but also several vertebrates, one of which is Heterodon. He was an incredible, influential naturalist with a fascinating life to learn about. Anyway, back to the hognose. This is Higgins, my hognose snake. There are four hognose species in North America. The Eastern hognose snake, Heterodon platyrhinus, which is the species our buddy Pierre Latreille named. And there are also three subspecies of the Western hognose. Mexican hognose, Gloid's hognose, and the nominate species of Western hognose, Plains hognose, or Heterodon nasicus nasicus. Like most hognoses in the pet trade, Higgins is a plains hognose, which is still commonly referred to as a western hognose. They can be found in sandy areas in prairies, plains, and open grasslands in Central North America, from Mexico all the way to the southern parts of the Canadian prairies. Where I live in Ontario, there are no western hognose snakes in the wild, but you can occasionally find an eastern hognose. Because it is sadly an endangered species here, it is actually illegal to own an eastern hognose in Ontario without a special permit. Plains hognose snakes are popular pets because they have a relatively easy care requirement and they have a very small size usually. Males are smaller than females, getting to about one and a half to two feet, and females can get to four feet. But that is an absolute monster of a hognose. The biggest they usually get is around three feet. Hognoses are also popular for their extensive morphs. There are more than 60 known morphs, ranging from pure white to black to yellows and browns, even purple or bright red. Higgins is a normal morph, so that means that this is the coloration that you would likely find on a plains hognose that you'd see in the wild. They have a pretty calm temperament for the most part, but can be picky eaters, which is one of the reasons that many consider the hognose to be a more intermediate snake. 
Because they often eat toads in the wild, especially when young, it can be really hard to get them to frozen thawed mice, especially when they are little. So it is a good idea to try and get these guys from a breeder who is willing to keep them until they are fully switched over. But even then, they sometimes decide to go back to being picky. Don't you? Oh, you're so cute. Luckily for us, we have four American toads, so we can scent his meal by rubbing it all over the toads, if we need to. It's very confusing for the poor toads, who sometimes try to eat the mouse themselves, but it has helped Higgins, especially when we first got him. Ever since then, he has been a fantastic eater, even if you do have terrible aim. There we go. In terms of setup and enclosure, it's pretty simple. Hognose is like a cozy home, so you don't need a huge tank. An enclosure just big enough for them to stretch out along one side is pretty good. For heating, a heat mat with a thermostat to make sure everything is the right temperature is preferable to an overhead light. Your hot side should be just under 30 degrees Celsius, and the cool side should be in the low 20s. With most snakes, you will need a hide on both the hot side and the cool side, a water dish, of course, and some enrichment items are a good idea too. They need a drier enclosure than most snakes, with the humidity around 30 to 50%. They also love to dig in burrows, so a good 2-3 to three inches of substrate is needed, more if you have a bigger snake. Aspen chips work great. It's easy to move through and holds tunnels well. This is actually what we have Higgins on now, but we will be upgrading him to a bioactive setup eventually. And when we do that, we will be using a mix of sand and dirt for him to dig through. As cute as they are, they hide a sinister secret. They are venomous. But you probably already knew that if you watched my video on snake venom, right? <laughs> While venomous, I am in no danger whatsoever. Their venom is mild and about as potent as a bee sting, and is used to subdue their prey, which as I said earlier, are toads or small mammals and lizards. And since they are rear fang venomous, their fangs are way in the back of their mouth. At his size, Higgins and I would basically be having to work together really hard to get a finger back far enough in his mouth for him to be able to envenomate me. I love it when a plan comes together. That's not their only secret. In addition to being venomous, hognoses in the wild that eat toads are also poisonous. You know the drill. Video's here. Now let's get to the fun stuff. See his nose? You wouldn't have a hard time noticing that it is upturned, which is actually where they get their name from. Hog nose snake referring to their pig-like nose. It's not really a nose though. It's actually a modified scale called a rostrum. But like pig noses, it is used to dig. It's like... Having the world's cutest shovel attached to your face. The face shovel gets the digging started. Then they use their strong, stout neck and body to help propel the nose through the dirt. Their scales are keeled to allow the dirt to go backward, but not let it forward as they dig. Even their tail is designed to help them dig, with a hardened, sharp scale at the tip to help them probe loose soil and find burrows or buried reptile nests. Oh yeah, they sometimes eat snake eggs and turtle eggs, sometimes even their own. You may notice that the hog nose's pattern looks kind of like a rattlesnake's. That's no accident. Their natural range overlaps with several rattlesnake species, and hog noses have adapted a look and some behaviors to mimic these deadly vipers. This is a great example of Batesian mimicry, where a harmless species mimics a dangerous one to scare off potential predators. When threatened, a hognose snake will aggressively coil up and shake its tail, just like a rattlesnake. They hood up by flattening out their head and neck to give them the same triangular head shape as a rattler. Then, they hiss loudly and strike repeatedly at their attacker. This is as far as the deception goes, though. Even though they strike, they kind of forget the fundamental principle of biting something, which is that you actually need to open your mouth first. I guess they must have missed that lesson because they usually just headbutt things with their pointy face and rarely actually bite. If 
looking like a scary rattlesnake doesn't work. They have one more trick up their sleeve. They play dead. Not just lie there and stop moving play dead, but full on soap opera. Over dramatic play dead. Blood! 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 Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> on the ground, mouth open, tongue out, vomiting and pooping on themselves. That kind of playing dead. The whole show is to suggest that either the hognose snake is too rotten to eat, or that they have either been poisoned or are sick and dangerous to eat. It may look kind of funny to watch, but this is a hognose's last ditch effort to save themselves. By the time they resort to playing dead, they're pretty sure that they are about to die for realsies and are extremely stressed out. It's not something you want to do to your own pet hognose at home or to one you find in the wild. If you do see this behavior, please just give them some space. Hognoses aren't just another pretty face. They are a fascinating snake with a ton of personality. Even though they do have a couple quirks that make them a little bit more challenging than your typical beginner snake, they are rewarding and adorable little dirt noodles. And they make great pets. From their extensive morphs, to their cute noses, how their little bodies can torpedo through sandy dirt, and the fact that they are both venomous and poisonous but still super safe to keep, they are just incredible, don't you think? That's it for today! Aww. Don't worry, there'll be another video out in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching me, the All Canadian Reptile Girl, and Higgins too, of course. I hope you enjoyed learning about hognose snakes and how amazing they really are. Please don't forget to check out my other videos and my Instagram, and as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. You know the drill. And remember to nurture all nature. See you next time, bye. Uh, um, mm -hmm. One more time? <laughs> yeah, I think we need to. And uh, I'm. <laughs> I think I think I think I am having sugar crash. Okay, one more time. All right. <sighs> Seems hard. <sighs> Control and that. Mm. Maybe one more time. My mouth just broke. <laughs> All right, stop laughing. Okay. This is so fun to do. This is stop doing this. All right. No, because I don't want it to be shaking. Thank you. I'm like a bird. I get distracted with my own reflection. He was a French zoologist, imprisoned, orphan, imprisoned as a baby. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> All right. He was a French zoologist. <laughs> Imprisoned as a baby. No. <laughs> Orphaned as a baby. That's that's actually quite sad. Yes. He was a French zoologist who was orphaned as a baby. <laughs> Just stop. stop. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.